I'm Stephen Weiner with Whistle Realty, brokered by EXP, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing a really great friend of mine, Catherine Matisse, and she is one of the co-founders, as you now have a new partner as well, in <laughs> Civility Partners. Yes. Thank you for being on the show, Catherine. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And the reason I wanted to bring Catherine on is because she does something that I would say saves culture and work in the workplace, right? Because there's toxicity that can happen, culture can change, and then all of a sudden things start to go sideways when you knew work to be one way right. and now you dread going to work. Right. So if you can tell our listeners, like, what does that look like in your experience within the, let's just call it the corporate work world or, you know, people that aren't necessarily working on their own, but when people are going into an office every day, what happens? What do you see? Yeah. So un unfortunately, we allow bad behaviors to happen. It's not in our nature to step in if someone's being rude or uncivil. And when we allow those sort of minor behaviors to go on, it starts to escalate. It's insidious. It works its way into the organization's culture. It becomes normal, right, to be rude, to interrupt. Um, and then sometimes we see it all the way at the top where we're working with an organization because their executive vice president is really bullying and harassing people and making it difficult for them to come to work. Um, and then we also do workforce surveys where we'll look at the whole organization and try to understand where the problems are and how the organization can turn those problems around. So what are, what are some examples that you know, people might be able to identify with that start to find their way in because I'm assuming it, it's not just like a 10 out of 10, right. it starts to make its way up. So what are some of the tips that you can give our listeners to look for? Yeah, honestly, it's three categories. You can see aggressive communication. So that nasty email that someone fired off because they're frustrated or the little bit of a yelling match in a meeting. Uh, so the, the aggressive communication is one category and it, again, starts off small and escalates uh, humiliating each other. So if I'm making jokes at your expense or uh, pointing out a mistake that you made in front of others, so humiliation. And then the third is some manipulation, passive aggressive types of behaviors. So taking credit for work that you did or um, giving you not all of, you don't have all of the steps to do the job that you need to do. So if there's five steps and I only give you three of them, you're gonna fail. So when, when do people call you? Is it usually when things are crumbling or, you know, it's really toxic? Yeah, I kind of joke. Uh, I get the call when the CEO has been slapped in the face. So normally wow. HR has been telling the C-suite, this is a problem that needs addressing. And they're going, no, no, we're hitting our numbers. We're good. We're getting our results. And then something happens. It's either somebody goes public like me too. Uh, somebody files a harassment complaint. So there's some catalyst that is usually why an organization is calling me. And then what happens like when you step in there, how do you help, you know, identify what's going on? Also talk to the responsible party. And let's just say, I, I don't know if the right word is victim, but um, no, right. Target no, target. Right. <laughs> and, and that's why I wanted to clarify because there's there, there's so much, I think, that we don't understand mm -hmm. as workplace changes, culture changes, what's acceptable in language mm -hmm. changes, just mm -hmm. like me using a word that isn't relevant today, right? Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of things that we're stuck on in the past and we don't really know what to do. So how do you start to focus on all of that where in a non-threatening way, you're helping recreate and put the culture back together? Yeah. Um, again, we do workforce surveys where we're, we do what's called a climate assessment. So that measures culture. It's a snapshot in time. So it looks at, at employee engagement, job satisfaction, trust in leadership, all, all sorts of things, inclusivity. Um, and then we can look at that and say, you know, for example, here, this one statement, people are rating, you know, 80% of your workforce doesn't agree with this statement. Wow. We can fix that, you know, so then we can take that data and make real tangible action items to say we can literally move the needle on this statement and you know it's always more than one statement but just an example yeah. and then in terms of the coaching that we do um often 
part of my sales process is sort of to coach the CEO on how to talk to this person who's been allowed to bully and even awarded and rewarded um, so that the coaching is really positioned in a way of, I care about you, I want you here, but you're causing some damage and I know you don't intend to, and we found you a coach who's really gonna be able to help you. When the person who is responsible for bringing this toxicity to the workplace mm -hmm. is having to talk openly or understand what they're responsible for. Mm -hmm. Do you typically see them kind of melt into it and relent or do they become rigid and try to protect themselves or what do you notice from the bully themselves? Yeah, it's a process. So I interview 15 people who work with them, some of whom they those names were given to me by the person I'm coaching, some of whom are confidential and have been added on. Um, and I go through the feedback with them and I, I read it to them and it's often 20 pages or so wow. of feedback. And so it'll say, you know, here, theme number one, you shame people in public. And here are the words of the people I interviewed. So it's no longer hearsay. It's not HR going, you need to be nicer. Um, and so in that conversation, naturally, they're, you know, justifying, denying, it's hard to take in. Um, and it usually takes me a, a few coaching calls for them to relent. But the thing is, is that they're not bad people. Sure. They want to make a difference. They want to change. And so they often sort of relent into this thing of, you know, help me. I don't want to be seen this way anymore. I'm, I want your help. Are there ways that the, the workplace can identify with how they can bring you in a lot sooner before things have also escalated to a point where, you know, the, the C-suite doesn't even know what to do? Yeah, so some tangible things are, you know, high turnover, absenteeism, presenteeism, product, productivity is going down, uh, glass door reviews if people are, you know, complaining about your workforce or, or your climate. Um, but there's lots of things that you can just observe. You can observe that a team feels collaborative or not. You can observe that a team gossips or not. You can, you know, so it's, there's a lot of things just if you're looking around you can see that people aren't happy or not working well together and that's when you should call us sure. um, and I'll just add to using gossip as an example so many organizations allow that type of under the radar behavior because it's not illegal and nobody's really taught you know there's no manager program on how to address gossip but that's yeah. the type of behavior that's insidious and turns into a toxic culture over time so call us when it's not so bad. <laughs> right, and you know, from some of the, the attorneys that we know that also do workplace litigation, mm -hmm. right, they also do a lot of talks as well, right? Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll come in even whether there's litigation or not, they'll just tell people what's going on. So what are the suite of services you offer outside of just, hey, call us when there's this issue yeah. so that people can also understand that, hey, we can have Catherine in, we're going to go through all these things. Maybe we'll identify issues that can become a problem. Yeah. Just so that, again, our listeners will understand that they don't have to wait for problems, but they should be hearing about. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You, I don't want you to call me when it's awful <laughs> and you're dying for help. Call me when you feel a level of unhappiness. That's all I can say. Um, and we certainly do tons of training programs on things like um, how to be an upstander when you witness someone gossiping or talking about someone, how to um, work together with your team to proactively build a positive environment within your team rather than hoping it just happens. Uh, we do lots of trainings on things like uh, manage for managers, how to coach behavior in addition to coaching performance. So uh, lots of preventative types of training programs. And of course, we're very interactive and um, have a lot of fun doing that so well you really do need to reach out to Catherine to have her and her company come on in and talk to your workplace because again there are so many things that we don't understand where a professional like Catherine will be able to not only identify things but prevent things through all this education so please reach out to her I know I get to sit and hear a lot of these stories <laughs> once a month in our professional network but she has become such an in-demand coach and speaker and someone whose business is absolutely exploding because there's not enough people that are talking about the realities between other human beings. It doesn't matter what, what their title is, 
we want respect. So culture is everything because mm -hmm. that's what binds people together. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you for being on our show today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thank you, Catherine.